What's up and welcome back to Kind of Funny's Kung Fu Panda in review. Of course, I am Tim Geddes, and God, unfortunately, today I'm joined by the producer slash producer Nick Scarpino. I bring sunshine into your rainy day. I you just bring want a you to know lot that. into every day I have. It does happen to be raining here in San Francisco. It's super rainy. Uh, and of course, when it rains, it pours. And when it pours, Nick's shoes get wet. Mm -hmm. And when Nick's shoes get wet, yep. Nick just takes his shoes off. <laughs> it's so oh cotton. <laughs> There we go. Put it on the table. There we go. <laughs> it's so close. Got to get my little grippers out, make them dry. Don't, don't call them don't that. Call them it the just grippies. Got worse. <laughs> it really did. I, I really do apologize too. Of course, it is Christmas in February, Joey Noel. There's an energy today, and I don't know. I don't know if it's the rain. Roger and I were talking about barometric pressure earlier. Wow. The, that's the craziest pressure. Yeah. So I think it's something having to do with one of those Just things. a bunch of bears. <laughs> 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 Try to, to read metric rulers. <laughs> uh, we're on the inch system. And as a bear, if you think about it. it. Uh, and then, of course, here. rounding out the group today, we have the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. Hello. I'm ready to talk about Kung Fu Panda 2. Andy, I feel like you've had a day as well. You've been in the in the lab with Mike playing Final Fantasy 7. I saw Greg come in there and harass you. Yeah, Gre times. Greg, um, I had the little tray in front of me with my iPad there, kind of reading chat, and Greg looked at Kevin and was like, move the tray aside. And I was like, are you about to run in here and jump? And he was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he jumped and dove on us. Good. Like a wrestling boom. Good. And he went back, and a little while ago, walked up to me and said, Andy, I'm fucking sick of this. I'm going to get some candy. <laughs> Do you want a Snickers? And I said, yeah. yeah, I would. So he got me a Snickers today. He but he didn't Aww. get you candy. No, he, he didn't even offer to get candy? any of us candy. No. What? Yeah. It was really mean. Yeah. Joey and I are now, we, we now have like our own little team candy. So we're not going to share any candy with him anymore. Now, Joey did bring up that I ate all of his snacks that he hides <laughs> in his desk. So that yeah. potentially is the reason why he's not offering me anything. And then Joey by proxy, of course, because she talks to me sometimes. So now she is one of the, uh, she's one of the Scarpino three. You've been eating I don't all of his. Know what any of that gyms. means? I didn't eat any of his slim gyms. Actually, Cool Greg gave me one of his slim gyms, and I was like, I'm not feeling the slim gym. It's... But I didn't want to be rude, so I took it and then I put it back in that little slim gym container. But I did then take as um, sort of a penance from my 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 charity. Um, I took two of what Greg's moon pies. There. <laughs> yeah, two, two of his moon your, pies. A penance for your charity. You know what I mean? Your charity. As a fee for being cool, I stole from Greg. I totally understand that. I don't understand why you guys watch this, but I understand what he just said. <laughs> Thank you for watching, though. This is a show we do each and every week. Uh, if you love what we do, please uh, support us with the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or YouTube to get all of our shows ad-free. You can watch us record them live, and you can get a daily <laughs> exclusive show. You just show me They're a pretty. picture of so a Nick just put his, his foot <laughs> for audio listeners and I think video too. No, no, I, I cut away quickly. Thankfully, Kevin cut away. Nick put his foot on the desk just to take a picture of it to then show them. Show us the photo. <laughs> well, I was going to send it to Andy, but I don't trust him yet. <laughs> what is that? What do you think he's going to do Wait, with you know, it? What are you waiting for to it, trust him? It'll come back to haunt me if I send him a picture of my bare naked foot. I will find a way to. Yeah, like, it's know. gonna be evidence. It's yeah, all gonna be stored yeah. away. Yeah, yeah. Andy will blow it up, make a big print of it. Building the case right now. You know? Make okay. a big print of it. That's that's your fear. Your fear. <laughs> <laughs> your fear is that he's gonna be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get Nick back. Well, I mean, if you're gonna <laughs> print something print. that big, I'm gonna want multiple shots of it. I'm gonna want that uh -huh. to pick mm -hmm. which one. Maybe a full touch up, Photoshop some of the some of the cuts I have like, in my that feet. Out of context. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was Andy. sent with love. Can you just get a banner of Nick's oh, content God. down for the next show? Oh, my Lord. No, thank you. <laughs> you can get in review for free and without the exclusive uh, content on YouTube and podcast services around the globe. Um, that's with ads, of course. Um, and thank you to our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, Kishan Patel, Nathan Lamoth, Karen Linder, James Hastings, Casey Andrew, and Casey Kern. Shout out all of you for showing up, thank supporting you, us. Remember you are name. the absolute best. Um, so today, everybody, we are talking about Kung Fu Panda 2. In some territories known as Kung Tu Panda. Those territories. You're a liar. Daily City, California. Uh. My friend Brandon Chu would only refer to it as Kung Tu Panda. I like that way better than I should. Yeah? Yeah. Because you're a bad person that's been around me way too long, Joey. <laughs> I kind of wish it was a like a part two with the Roman numeral. <laughs> I feel like when you make a movie and you're sort of angling for a sequel, you need to have that title in mind. And you need a character right. on screen doing the peace sign. And it's like 100%. Two. Like that's the two, you know. Uh, this one came out on May 26th. You may look, you may be confused though, Tim, and be like, those two fingers are up, but there's a lot of other fingers on that hand. 
pandas have six. Too many fingers. Too many fingers. They have six. Too many fingers. fingers. So Kung Fu Panda two is actually three. <laughs> Can you please let him get to his next point? <laughs> <laughs> May 26, 2011, a.k.a. Kevin Coelho's birthday. Woo! 21! Oh, that's why. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's why. For, for once, I thought Kevin's like, let's let's move the show along. Keep it good now. He's, it's focus. selfish. <laughs> oh, God, we should have known. You know? I uh, love it, Kevin. Uh, this one had a one time. Us. I uh, hate all of us. 90 minutes on the dot. An hour and 30 minutes. Two minutes less than the first movie, wow. even. You gotta Cut appreciate it. Yeah, you yeah. really gotta appreciate it. Uh, this one was directed by Jennifer Ya Nelson, an American story artist, character designer, television director, illustrator, and film director. She's God, best known up. for That's a lot. Yeah, what do we do? <laughs> yeah, all right. uh, best all known right. for directing Kung Fu Panda Two, Kung Fu Panda Three, and The Darkest Minds. Ya is the first woman to solely direct and the first Asian American to direct a major. Um, major American animated film. Uh, she won an Annie Award for Best Storyboarding in an Animated Feature Production uh, for directing the opening of Kung Fu Panda 1. So that oh, was that was dope. Yeah. That opening was cool. And she was the second woman nominated for an Academy Award for Best Animated Feature for her work on Kung Fu Panda 2. Uh, the film proved to be one of the most financially successful films directed by a woman. As a supervising director for her work on Love, Death, and Robots, she Ooh, won oh. multiple Emmy Awards. This lady's, this lady's dope. He's Louise. Yeah, yeah, doing some cool stuff. Uh, some music, cool once again, done, done by uh, Hans Zimmer and John Powell. Um, Still wild. <laughs> I know. Zims. This one, I feel like oh, we'll get to it. Yeah, we'll get to it. A uh, budget of 150 mil, a box office return. Let me guess. 740 million. 628. A little more sinister. 666. Six hundred. Oh, wow. Sixty-seven the number of the beast. million dollars. Wow. Yeah. Lucifer. Thank you. Number. <laughs> <laughs> Lucifer's area good. <laughs> uh, so there we have it. It is Kung Fu Panda 2. Nicholas Scarpino. Yes. The man without shoes. I want to know your thoughts on this movie. The Barefoot Prince. Um, you know, it's funny. I I know I've seen this movie before. I don't remember any of it. And uh, it, it was not... It's not as fun, I think, as the first Kung Fu Panda. It's still an enjoyable movie. Fun voice cast. You got Jean-Claude Van Damme rounding out the cast <laughs> as the croc, which is an absurd underutilization of his talents. He could have been a lead in this movie for sure. Um, wonderfully animated. Some fun sequences. And I like the ending of it. I like the inner peace moment. I think that ties in nicely with, uh, with, with Shifu sort of setting that up in the beginning. A little heavy-handed, but whatever. We see it coming. Um, and Gary Oldman is the bad guy. What more could you ask for? I think it's just missing a little bit of the tightness and the charm of the first one. And it, and, it, and to me, it kind of, it kind of suffers from the sequelitis, which is let's get it out fast and let's not, let's just like let Jack Black say whatever he wants to say. And a lot of his dialogue just doesn't make any sense or feels like it's improv that was done in the booth. And they're like, that's good enough. Let's keep, let's move along with this. So I think a lot of the humor didn't, didn't work for me. And I think all of that just kind of leads to a slightly lesser movie than the first Kung Fu Panda. Andy Cortez. I really enjoyed it. I, I don't think I enjoyed it as much as the first, but was still kind of wildly surprised, especially by that sort of intro fight scene. When the action is popping off, I'm just like, God damn, I did not give this give these movies any credit like at that time. I surprised I didn't like even try to watch it back in the day. I just thought it was gonna be another sequel by DreamWorks that's probably gonna suck or whatever. And and I still find myself really enjoying it. Yeah, I loved Gary Oldman as um the peacock villain, I freaking just love all the different fight styles that all these different animals sort of incorporate. And um, yeah, by the I finished it this morning because I had like 30 minutes left. And I'm like, God damn, I'm tearing up at the fucking eight in the morning watching this goddamn panda. Like, it's just, it's, it's, <laughs> this goddamn it, it, it's, it's the fucking Shang-Chi moment. The same sort of like, we're going to give you this awesome earned moment that is super predictable and you see it coming from, my, from a million miles away, but it still hits and the music hits and I still had goosebumps and the relationship with the dad I thought was like beautiful. I fucking loved it. Um, I really enjoyed this part, uh, this movie. And of course, yeah, JCVD as on, the bro. croc and um, what's his face as the ox. I'm blanking on it. I can see his face right now because I finally watched this one on Amazon. I did rent it from the device. Mm. You can do that in 2024 20, now, everybody. I have uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme written down, and I just I can't even remember who the other person was, and I know it was a big actor. The Ox was awesome. I, I really enjoy the voice cast. Oh, here. it's uh, it's uh, the president from 24. Yes. Uh, 
the Allstate commercials. Yes, the Allstate. David, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, David yeah. Hayden, 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 Dennis, Dennis Burt, Haysburg. Thank you. Fantastic. Awesome. Loved yeah, it. Really um, nice. li- enjoyed this way more than I thought I was going to. Um, had a great time with it. I don't think the my the one thing I wish happened was I wish that the action was a bit more consistently awesome throughout the rest of the. I think it started off incredibly awesome with cool moves and you know doing all the. The different little animals and that one little fight and he had that little the little bunny playing the guitar all that shit was so cool and creative and i feel like it lacked a bit of the wow factor throughout the rest of it but still really really enjoyed this movie i'm actually going to jump uh, off of this just because i feel like i'm very similarly aligned to you we're going into this i really kind of had a feeling that is rarer for me within review movies i know a couple of us here sometimes like "Ah, i don't want to have to fucking watch this i'm usually excited about going into them even if they're bad or even if it's eight sequels in or whatever this was one of the best examples of a time i was like i do not want to watch this movie like i enjoyed the first one because you got your steam deck bro i mean you know (laughs) honestly there were things i was like "Ah, i'd rather do this but i was like i'm not really looking forward to putting this on it's only an hour and a half so it's gonna be fine I'm so pleasantly surprised. This was yeah. such a fun time. I think that uh, it's hard to say if it's better or worse than the first one uh, to me. Like, I feel like it's a lot closer than I would have ever, ever expected it Damn. to be. I do think that I agree with a lot of what y'all are saying and that uh, there's a, it's lacking a little bit of consistency. And like the first movie is like the perfect hero's journey. This kind of feels like the perfect hero's journey sequel where everything's just turned up a little bit. But I feel like because of that, the balance is off. It doesn't like scale as well. Um, and it's for all the things I didn't like about the first one of it being the, the like the colors of it, not vibing with me and all that. Something about this one. It's, it's ugly. Like I really don't mm. like the look. It's not of as movie. vibrant, right? Yeah. I think it's darker. I think they're using a lot of like like redder and brown tones in this. It reminds me of like the the 360 era where everything mm. was like brown and this like rage. really really like it's, rage that whole thing. And it, like there's something about the the color scheme, like the way that they handled it, and like just the the, sh- the shading of everything. Like it. Whereas Kung Fu Panda One, I was like, damn, I'm pretty damn impressed for 2008. Like comparing it to the 2007 Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. This, I'm like, it almost feels like a step back. And I think that's just kind of how technology sometimes, like, at the time it might have been advanced, but you look at it now and you're like, oof, that's, it there, didn't age. There wasn't a jump like I thought there was going to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. R- real quick, did you, in those flashback sequences where they showed the sequences from part one, <clears throat> those looked better, though? They, they, they looked like they were maybe re-rendered or retouched. Um, I didn't notice. Because I noticed, like... I didn't notice like a drop in in quality, so uh, that may or may not be true. Maybe I'm just, my eyes are tricking me, uh, but I thought that was pretty neat. But uh, yeah, so visually, I I was kind of like it, it felt made for TV, and I know that that is uh, a, a gross uh, over exaggeration of the situation. But I feel like where's the first one? I'm like, oh, this looks like a theater movie. The second one, I was like, it doesn't really look like a theater movie. Um, but that's just the visuals. I think the story, the performances, the action, all of that, I was like, I am incredibly surprised at, at how much effort was put into this. And my number one takeaway, Gary Oldman's Peacock villain, I, oh my God, I fucking love it. Maybe one of my favorite like Dude, bad guys. Like yeah. just pure, I'm a bad guy and I'm cool as fuck, little metal on the talons mm-hmm. going on. Just him being a peacock and it just being <laughs> Gary Oldman's voice. Like they just did everything right. And I loved the villain last time. So for them to up the villain ante in this in a way that it just felt like, oh yeah, this is perfect <laughs> for me. Obsessed with I, it. I couldn't help but just like yearn for a souls like in this sort of like cartoony <laughs> style because all of these different enemies have such cool fighting techniques. And yeah, the the blades on the whatever um, dude, Come it's on, so man. sick, man. I hope that they come back. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like there's there's that like they're they're dead, but are they dead type moment? And I'm like, I hope that we see this villain again because I was just absolutely obsessed with it. But that's kind of my takeaways. Joe, what about you? I actually ended up liking this more than I thought I was going to. Um I'm like not usually an animation person. That's like not one of my primary favorites. And I think maybe that's why I was like a little bit low on it last week. Um, and I do agree that it doesn't have like the same humor, but I think for what it lack, what, where the humor is lacking makes up for it with heart. Like I really like the dynamic between, uh, Jack Black and James Hong. Like that's, Mm. it's so good. Like, does not everyone want goose James Hong to be their dad? I mean, James Hong is amazing. (laughs) I love him. Yeah. Like the the heartbreak you feel Joe, when he like leaves when he like fucking leaves or whatever and like and he says noodles yeah but i but i forget the line that sort of precedes yeah. that it was just yeah. like oh it broke my heart and they animators did such a great job of like emoting him you know yeah um i 
there's truly nothing more I could say about Gary Oldman. Like, what a great villain. Like, just super, super solid. There's something I need help remembering because mm-hmm. there's some, um, and I'm going to jump forward a little bit because I think this is a thing that I love about it. But as I'm thinking, I'm like, did this happen? All of like the dreams that Poe had yeah. were in like that, uh, the opening animation the 2D style. Animation, yeah. And then when it transitions to being like, oh, this isn't a dream. This is a memory. And it modernizes. Yeah. Incredible. I was just like, <gasps> it's right when his mom movie. It's right when his mom <laughs> so puts him in the crate and, yeah. he, and, he, and he basically connects. Oh, that's what his dad's memory was. And that yeah. his memory. And it becomes real. It becomes 3D. And it's, and was, then it's like horrifying. Cause he's so it, cute. I know. His mom says, I love you. And then runs up and gets hunted down by the wolves. When you, that transition happened. I was like, if what happened, yeah, if what, if what I think happened actually happened. Cause I was like, I didn't, re- I'm not going to rewind to like go back and find the scenes. I was like, this is one of the greatest things of all time. Um, so I really loved it. I really like the uh, evolution of the relationship with him and Tigress. I think that's like a big plus for this Art movie. Hard style or hardcore style. Oh, yeah. yeah. So sick. Um, cool. And overall, I had, I think I had more fun with this one. Personally. Yeah, man, it's, it's interesting. interesting. Uh, what else is interesting is uh, while I was talking about my thoughts on this movie um, a couple minutes ago, I got a text from Nick saying, uh, please check General Slack. And then I go check General Slack, and it is a, a Slack from Greg, actually, mm. Uh, mm. to the entire Later. company, mm-hmm. saying, attention, uh, the founders voted, and by a vote of two to one, I assume Tim's against this, this is now a shoeless <laughs> office. Yep. So, grippers for the win. Get them out. Grippers uh, for the win. want to switch <laughs> Grippers for the win. <laughs> I, I, uh, but very necessary for this interruption i'm glad like we're all uh, together and i love the um uh, I'm, I'm assuming tim's against this that's great mm-hmm. kevin yesterday or no last week rather when we left the review was like huh i may watch this now he was like i i, I really had no interest in this movies i never watched them but you all like may have sold me on it kevin do you ha- are you even inclined anymore to watch these andy i have a great update for oh. you oh it has nothing to do with this movie because right. I did not have time to watch it. I still want to, and this is definitely, this conversation so far is piquing my interest even further. Uh-huh. But I want you to know that I'm not wearing any shoes right now, Andy. Oh, <laughs> oh fuck. We, you walked right into that, Andy. The revolution me too. will not be televised. <laughs> and I, and I, I didn't slip at all when I was walking into that because I yeah. had my yeah, shoes on. I had your shoes. <laughs> Grippers. Grip. Yeah. Oh, Thank you, Kevin. There's, a, there's a line in the sand. Yeah. There's a line in the sand. Are um, we going to get... Sl- is this like a slipper office then? I have a lot of detail questions. <laughs> uh, slippers are a type of shoes. Also, Tim, the sand won't be slowing us down because it's not getting stuck in our shoes. <sighs> Again, you're not required to be shoeless in this office. I mean, it says it's, it's a that's... shoeless office. Well, you, that's yeah, open yeah. to like the interpretation of the law. It's not mandated. Uh, like and I just want, I do want to say we are not taking any liability for all the sharp things that are on the floor in this office. So if you pierce your foot and it bleeds, <laughs> that's not on us. Uh, I will be putting my shoes on as soon as they're dry. <laughs> well, you can oh, support he this. just slip flop the <laughs> hell out of that in a moment. Is it because I put my foot, you know why? Because I put my foot down and there's a chip down there from when I was eating earlier and it stabbed my foot. And I'm like, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> A chip down there <laughs> that you were eating. Kevin had to take the scoops seen. away from me earlier. <laughs> right before we went fucking live on this, Nick Shoeless. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't even need to explain to you what's happening because he's been Just doing like it this whole fucking time. Little Hobbit. But adding him having a big ass bag of <laughs> Tostitos or whatever oh, the fuck they're called, chomping all these goddamn chips. And right before he goes live, he goes, got some chips stuck in my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> This is the this is the leadership here at this company. My favorite was before that, as Nick is wolfing down this bag of chips. He says something to me, and Kevin had to interrupt and be like, Did you understand that at all? I was like, unfortunately, I did. He was mad at he was mad at Greg, uh, because Greg bought me a Snickers bar, but he had a lot of chips in his mouth. He's like, you fuck, but the fuck a great bar of chips. That's exactly what he said. I just don't understand why he wouldn't offer it to us. That's fine. You can get a kind of funny membership to not have to hear this ad, but for everyone else. Here's a word from our sponsors. Kinda Funny turns nine years old today. We could have made it nine days without your support. That's why 2024 is all about doubling down on our shows and making it simpler than ever for you to get the most out of our content. Our revamped Kinda Funny membership is your one-stop shop for all our amazing content, which now includes on a weekly basis, the Kinda Funny podcast, in review, the Kinda Funny games cast, PS I love you, XOXO, the Kinda Funny X cast, the brand new series, Kinda Funny Game Showdown. Five episodes of Kinda Funny Games Daily and five exclusive Gregway vlogs. 
and five days of streaming fun with me and the gang here in our newly revamped streaming space. It's going to be filled with a ton of laughter and a whole lot of shenanigans. We'll see you there. That's more than 20 pieces of content a week from an 11 person independent team in San Francisco. That's a lot. And to get the most out of it, all we're asking for is $10. $10 gets you the kind of funny membership and that entitles you to ad free versions of the shows, the ability to watch the podcast live as we record them and the exclusive access to my daily show, Greg Way. You can get your kind of funny membership on patreon.com slash kind of funny or youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Yes. We are expanding our Kind of Funny membership offering to YouTube so people can take full advantage of the platform they prefer. If you want to go above and beyond the Kind of Funny membership to support us, we will still have higher Patreon tiers, albeit with some changed up perks. We just wanted to make the message as clear as possible that the $10 Kind of Funny membership is for the masses to get all the core content people love. Everything above that is very appreciated. The support means the world to us, you all are the best. But the $10 Kind of Funny membership available on both patreon.com slash kind of funny and youtube.com slash kind of funny games is where we see the value of what we do. Kind of Funny is a dream come true and we wouldn't have it without you. We hope if you've ever enjoyed the content, you can support us for at least a month as we prepare for our biggest year ever. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. We're gonna rank Kung Fu Panda. No, we don't sing. No, we don't do that part. He's a plot for Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> I don't know if it's an A or a B. There. I can't tell. I love you so much. Because last baby. last week I tried doing a, uh, I did D minor and it was mm-hmm. it's D major. Kung Fu Panda. But I went. Kung Fu it's yeah. like very eerie. You know, well, it's a sequel, <laughs> and this one's darker. I, I will say that without the part that we don't play, it's really hard to recognize that it's anything. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if we want to like rework that for number three. I'll throw that back in there, man. Get that back in there. Sounds so. <laughs> Hit us with the plot, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the plot for Kung Fu Panda Two. I didn't pull any lines from this one because I didn't. There's nothing really super memorable. We get another skadoosh, but it doesn't really. Noodles is good. It was the one too where it was like it's not about where you where you started or whatever. It's what you're gonna do now. I don't know. I yeah. I yeah. Remember. I mean, the soothsayer <laughs> stuff was. Well, it was fine. Shout out to Michelle Yeoh. You know what I mean? So dope. I just want her. I want to be like ah, I don't know what to get for lunch, and then have her just be right over there and be like, it's not gonna matter. You know, nothing matters. Just get the burrito. But yes, I want to put your fucking shoes back on. <laughs> no, she's like, this office is now shoeless. Michelle Yeoh tells us about the peacocks and the uh, inventing fireworks. And then Shen uh, got a bad omen. And he was like, I'm going to make all, uh, basically, I'm going to make all these fireworks. I'm going to take them out to the world. And his parents are like, no, you can't do that. And he's like, what? I can absolutely do that. And he goes on the offensive, freaks his parents out. So they banish him. Chen swore he would return, and uh, all of China would bow down to his awesomeness. It's like when you got, have one of those, like, your little cousin was like, in the backyard burning squirrels and you're like oof something's wrong with this kid like so this Jesus. something's gonna be off with this kid i don't think that's a universal experience really <laughs> you gotta call no. someone about that person yeah they're, they're burning saying, like, just squirrels keep, keep an eye out yeah you know what i mean like torturing, torturing animals, animals. Yeah, that's not good maybe like the magnifying glass with the ants that shit was Feels... cool though are we calling about you oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, we get a scene where uh, a bunch of wolves now are, are at his beck and call, and they're making the Uruguay down in their cool steel mill f- uh, yeah. factory. Uh, they're really forging stuff out of metal, probably a big tannin, so Shen can take over China. We cut back over to the Furious Five, who are stuffing bean buns into Poe's mouth before training. It reminds me of the time I took down a breakfast burrito before going backcountry skiing and almost shit myself. Poe catches up with Shifu, who was practicing one of uh, Uguay's final teachings can we talk about that what the Inner water piece. looks like in this scene in the waterfall it looks unreal yeah like i this was the one time i went back and rewound i was like is it it's it feels like a different level of animation just like the mistiness of it and stuff beautiful i, lo- I love these shots of him kind of just a little tiny so so amongst everything yeah so so damn cool i really love that the first movie did its job of setting up characters and locations so that when we go back to places like off the jump from this one, I'm like, oh hell yeah, we're going to the the tear waterfall place, and it's like that's just cool, you know? Like they yeah. they, they set up a world that like I guess stuck with me. And I later. think I think we, you know we talked about the color palette earlier. I think that was one of the things they were trying to establish in this was the colors here are a lot more vibrant. They're greens, there's blues, and then we cut over to Gangmen City. It's a lot more earth tones and, and reds. Unfortunately, we just don't cut back enough, back and forth enough to really have that matter. 
that makes sense? Yeah, totally. So you, yeah, you, you, you stay in that sort of darker dynamic, world, and you're like, oh, it's yeah. a little bit, it's a little bit uh, muted color palette. Anyway, Although I do love that their fire is red. Yeah, I love that. Like instead of orange. Yeah, like every any time they somebody's holding a torch, it's just like a very sinister looking red, yeah. like super unnatural. But I think it looks awesome as it's, shit. That's very cool. Uh, Co- Poe catches up with Shifu, who's practicing one of Uguay's final uh, inner piece. The scene is interrupted when Poe gets uh, where bandits are attacking the village for metal. Furious Five pop onto the scene, and I love that Craig, that Crane is sort of giving him the assist to like slow land him, like sort of soft cool. land him. All this is such really a cool. Avengers Age of Ultron team up moment, and I was just like, damn, they were popping off here. This is really exciting and fun to watch. I love the line of like the tell the musicians to start playing action music because it is on. <laughs> yeah, such a corny thing, but Jack Black can pull it off. And the choreography in this whole fight scene is just so sick. I'm also I'm also just gonna give a shout out to David Cross here, or at least the Crane character, for trying to get the caca call started. <laughs> you know, I for one understand, I sympathize. Yeah, it's hard to get that to get picked <laughs> it's up. Hard to get it off the ground. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> uh, I don't have shoes. But uh, they beat they beat uh, Poe and the team save the day. But Poe is blindsided when he spots the crest of a peacock on the shoulder of one of the wolves, and it reminds him of a memory from his youth. And then he gets smashed in the face. He sees that he sees a little panda bear, and he's like, "What?" And then he gets smashed in the face. He heads back to his dad's noodle shop uh, as a local hero. The kids want to see him, of course. Uh, Poe asks his dad where he came from, and his dad finally tells him he is adopted. Of course, Poe already knew that. Uh, he's like, I'm a panda. But like then, like later, he didn't know it for some reason. So I think there's a little confusion there with the writing where we're like, po, does he know that he's adopted? Because the joke is that he doesn't, right? He's the only person that doesn't know. And then in this scene, he sort of says he does. But then later, it, when he's talking to Tigress, he's like, he, he just discovered it. Yeah, would agree. I don't know. It's wild. It, yeah, it is a little weird. Uh, let's see. He wants to know where he came from. Mr. Ping, of course, found Poe in a vegetable crate. Now, let me tell you, baby Poe, so just cute. the cutest thing on the planet. Oh, yeah. Uh, and man, he eats like a drunk Nick. Just a lot. <laughs> just can't stop eating. <laughs> I made a decision. Tried, I tried to put some pants on him. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> drunk Nick. Just hammered. <laughs> put him in the bed. Uh, Poe, Mr. Ping says, I made a decision that would forever change my life. To make my soup without radishes and to raise you as my son. Uh, Shen interrupts uh, the, uh, the we cut back over to the master's council, which is uh, st- oh, I wrote them all down, but never mind. Um, uh, he interrupts them uh, and they're Master talking Ox, right? Master Ox, sorry, Master Croc, Master Thundering Rhino, and then we've got the soothsayer as well. I think there might have been one more in there, that's why I was hesitating, but I don't think so. Maybe I cut, got them all. Shen, of course, makes quick work of Master Croc and Master Storming Ox. When he can't beat Master Thundering Rhino, he unleashes his secret weapon on him a massive cannon. Shifu. Can we just talk about Shen, though? Like, so incredibly cool. Like, the way the peacock's animated, like, all the things, like, the, the feathers, whatever the hell they're called, coming out, like, the confidence in the way he walks, and just, like, it's backed up by this voice that's just. It's entrancing. It's like, always the it's it's a combination of the voice and the unhinged eyes, dude. Yeah, like exactly. when you want something to be unsettling at, in like animation, you make the pupils way smaller than the whole eyeball. Like anything with a big pupil is going to be kind of enticing and like yeah. friendly to mm-hmm. look at. But when it when the pupil is so tiny amongst a big eyeball, it just looks like. This dude is fucking insane. Can we get a check on Greg's people? It's <laughs> <laughs> a good call. But I, I, Maybe then this is where the movie for me like like really started like me being like, huh, I'm more into this than I expected. Because before this, even with the action scenes, like some of it was fun. Like the whole music fight was like entertaining. But one of the notes I had is that like this, it's going for something and it's kind of nailing it, but it's not getting my blood pumping. Like. It's like very serviceable. It's very good, but it's not like exciting. And once uh, the peacock came in, I was like, okay, here's a little bit of that excitement that I'm looking for. But then the line, unless he's stopped, it could bring the end of Kung Fu. And I'm like, I'm such a simple guy. Yeah. That's all yeah. I need here. Yeah. Kung Fu being threatened. <laughs> I, I do think you, you hit the nail on the head, though, with the Avengers 2 like, comparison. I, I think this movie kind of smacks that. Entertaining to me, but just missing something in certain parts. Of this, uh, having said that, there are two parts in this movie that absolutely make me cry. We'll get to those in a little bit. Just some high best moments. Your eye thing. I think the fact that that eye pattern is all over his feathers too. It's just like oh. jarring. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shifu, of course, gets word back. Which, just like Tim said, this could be the end of all kung fu. And then, uh, of course, Pug goes, "But I just got kung fu." <laughs> so good. Uh, but how can I stop <laughs> something that can stop kung fu? And uh, Shifu says, anything is possible when you have inner peace. Mr. Ping interrupts and asks Poe not to go. He says, I am the dragon warrior. If I don't go, then what am I? And he says, you're my son, right? That line, man. Oh, 
And then it's followed up with just like, oh, we hit you in the gut. Let me fucking kick you in the dick. Yeah. Well, what is this after that? The, I'll be back before you can say noodles. Oh, noodles. And he and walks he away and he just goes, noodles. noodles. Oh, my God. Tough. Perfectly done. Very well done. But it's, uh, it, I guess I think it's just that perfect delivery of yeah. like, you're what, what else would I be without? You're my son, right? Like. Oh, my heart was just breaking. I just think dude. that if you, I mean, you like, you, we love James Hong, right? Like, we can just yeah. agree to that. And we should just maybe watch all the movies in his anthology again, including Balls of Fury one more time. Just do it one more yeah. time. Just you know? do it one we'll more do Big time. Trouble Little Child, we'll do Balls of Fury. It'll be great. One, two punch. One more time, Tim. He's got his shoes on. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Answer the phone. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Poe heads to Shen uh, as the village prepares his weapons uh, for the impending fight. Uh, we get a little montage back and forth, kind of trending and stuff. Uh, Poe has a nightmare about his parents replacing him with a radish that does better kung fu than he does, and I've had that same dream. Uh, he wakes up in a rage and uh, 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 starts, and a drop of water falls in his head, so he tries to get inner peace, but of course he doesn't have it. He starts raging against it, and then all the water drops in his head. Tigress, of course, uh, comes to his aid and offers to be a more worthy punching bag because she is, quote, trained hard style, which is, quote, Severely cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Poe tells him. Uh, uh, Poe tells her that he just found out he was adopted, and she goes, "Your dad, the goose." Uh, <laughs> that must have been quite a shock. Uh, Shen, of course, inter interrogates the soothsayer uh, later at the palace about his future. She shows him the peacock that is, is defeated by a warrior, black and white. Nothing has changed. I like the little goofiness of her. She's a goat, so you're like, is she eating the? His, his tapestry of his of his gown, or is she actually using that? And then she actually does the the soothsayer trick, and then she starts eating his thing again. And she's like, get away from that. I love the the use of the the yin yang for transitions. Yeah. Uh, they did it in the first movie too, but doing it here for the little training montage sequence, and then it kind of ending, and then being like the warrior in black and white. And it's like it's a fucking panda, but it's also a yin yang. Come on, man. yeah. <laughs> uh, Even the final sequence, yeah, with the, the so tight. The, the wolf the, the, the what are they called? Like the cannons or whatever near the end of it. Yeah, cannons. It's kind of like there are multiple one, cannons, right? I didn't dream yeah. that. There's so it was like one big cannon and then yeah. a bunch of smaller cannons. That's what I thought. Jokes at the movie. Uh, Wolf Boss, played by. Oh, I don't know. Oh, uh, Danny McBride. Danny McBride. Oh. That's right. That's right. Rushes yeah. in to warn Shen about the warrior panda, and everyone freaks out. The five sneak into the city and decide to go into stealth mode uh, to sneak into the palace. Of course, Poe is very bad at it. Um, he saves a brave sheep by beating up a wolf. This is the, the sequence where they dress up as the dragon and then poop out the, the villains. And it's really funny. It gets a laugh out of me. And I also <laughs> love the top down shot of it. Kind of looking like the Pac-Man Pac -Man shot. Where they're yeah. eating it and yeah. pooping it out. Very, very funny. Very creative. Uh, we get an amazing sequence where they beat up all of them. Uh, talk about that. Uh, Monkey does the uh, As they sneak into the prison, Monkey's like, look, I will let you know if anyone comes by doing caca. <laughs> and again, I laugh. Because <laughs> it's tough. But it's going to pick up one of these things. Uh-huh. For those of you who don't know, that's the sound that I make when I'm interrupting Andy on his personal Discord channel to play games with him. And he hates it. They all hate it. Yeah, we'll be playing something else, and then Nick just comes in. <laughs> oh, fuck. Here he is. God. That's how he announces himself. <laughs> I wait. I wait till they see me in the Discord. And then I go. And it's like, no matter how low you put the volume on him, it still somehow shines through. Does Danielle ever ask you what goes on in your No, room? because she's usually asleep by then. And then and our, our two rooms, but our two rooms are separated by the living room. Oh, okay. So the sound, fortunately, if the door's closed, doesn't travel. We did multiple tests before we moved in. Multiple <laughs> Call tests. Test. Yeah. With the realtor sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> Go a little farther out now. <laughs> Uh, the team breaks into Gungman Jail, but Monkey and uh, but uh, hey, man, Croc and Ox don't want to leave. They're like, dude, if we leave, this dude's got a weapon that'll blow up the entire city. We're better off here. We get a cool little sequence where they're where he's like, you can't get me out of this jail cell. So uh, uh, Poe has to figure out how to do it with a little revolving door action. Ends up doing it, and of course, they go right back into another jail cell because they don't want to they don't want to risk the entire city of uh, Gungman. Um, it's time to surrender. Panda Kung Fu is dead, is what he says. Wolf Boss interrupts and chases him. And the, this is the chase through the Gungman City, where they chase after him. And he's uh, on like a little one-wheel thing. And he's like, I need a punch. And Tigress gives him like a hard way punch to the butt. And it supersizes him. And then and he grabs on Wolf Boss, shoots him up in the air. Well, back to the future homage there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire. With the stuff. fire. Um, shoots him up in the air. They land, of course. And he's like he post-talking mad shit until he realizes, uh-oh, they're in front of the entire... Shen's army with all the wolf bosses and they've been caught. Uh, they put all the handcuffs on them, including a little box cell for Mantis. Um, and Poe's act starts acting kind of like it was his idea to get caught the entire time until he comes 
to his nemesis, Bears. <laughs> I did love him being like, oh my god, this is like the six-point lock or whatever. You yeah. use this on, on uh, what was his name? Uh, from the villain from part one. Oh, Tai Long. Ta- yeah. yeah. <laughs> tai Long, yeah. Which, because he was like, oh, it's like a pressure point thing. And yeah. it gets tighter as you, the more you, like, he's geeking out about it. Yeah, like, cool. Which is kind of cool. Uh, they escort um, him past Rhino's hammer, which I thought was a nice little touch, because Rhino is actually dead. Uh, and up to Poe's old enemy at the stairs. Of course, the joke here is that one of the gorilla is this lumbering thing, and, and Shen's like, oh, God, this thing's huge, and it's coming for me. And then all of a sudden, it's gorilla. One of the gorilla guards carrying him up, slams him down. Poe's just super cool about the whole thing. I love the way the gorillas are designed. They they're, look so sick. Uh, of course, he he's... It's a raw red herring for Poe because all he's doing is scanning the horizon trying to find the weapon, which he does find, which is a little tiny mini count, can- and he springs into action to kill the cannon, but it's not really a cannon. It's a toy, and of course, Poe fails to realize there's a massive cannon spotlighted in the middle of the room that he completely missed that was right in his peripheral vision the entire time. Thankfully, Viper has been picking the lock, and it was, in fact, a red herring because Mantis, great callback to the first mm-hmm. movie, the Mantis that's in the cell is the Mantis toy because they are in fact the <laughs> so exact same good. Also, I don't know if you noticed the Poe toy in the beginning of the movie. Oh, no, po's, I didn't see po's that. Poe's one of the guys now. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> the kids are like playing yeah. there. Oh. Uh, before this, of course, Shen has a good laugh because he's like, you had your entire life to plan this revenge uh, and this is how you this is how you did it. And Poe's like, what are you talking about? I just found out that you were doing this like, you know, two days ago. And he's like, wait, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. He's like, wait, you don't know. Of course, Chen knows what's going on. Knows, knows Poe, knows his parents. We don't know that quite. I yet. just, I love a star scream ass bad guy. I love the whiny little bitch. That's like, I deserve to be number yeah. one, you know? And then yep. he just pulls it off, man. It's so great. <clears throat> uh, this springs a big fight up this big tower. Uh, Shen escapes to his other palace and fires three. Well, they, bl- they blow up the cannon. And they're like, we're super excited about that. We blew it up. And then Shen goes to the, the other palace and then fires three more cannons. And like, shit, he's got a lot of these things. He's been building an arsenal. Uh, they destroy the entire thing. Crane has a broken wing. They all get trapped inside the building as Shen continues a barrage. Uh, the only way out is up, which I'm pretty sure they stole from the ignorant entrance. Oh, um, yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Wow. I thought you were going to say Willy Wonka, but okay. Yeah. No, that's pretty <laughs> fun too. Uh, they head to the top of the building as it falls over to ride the fortress walls, uh, ride over the fortress walls amongst a flurry of fiery arrows. Uh, they head back to the prison, before, uh, and Tigress tells Poe she he's got to stay there because he's too much of a liability. He froze again when he saw when he saw the peacock feather it triggered him, and so he's got to stay there. And he's like, "No, I'm definitely coming." And Tigress orders him to stay. Poe admits that Shen was there last time he saw his parents. He knows who Poe really is. Tigress gives goes into the kind of throw a punch at him for a second and then gives him a hug, and it's nice. It's good. And then the suit. Angelina Jolie's awesome. Yeah, she's so good in this role. Soothsayer, of course, back with Shen, tries to uh, stop the madness. Tells him that you stop these, this madness so your parents can rest. The cup you choose to fill has no bottom. Of course, oh, it is not. What a line. It's a rad line. Uh, the five spot Shen's massive weaponry ar- ar- armory and decide to bring the building down around it. This is the factory. Meanwhile, Poe sneaks into the factory where they're melting everyone's steel to make cannons. He's Shen's- just panda rolling around. So Great. Uh, Shen spots him and Poe grills him for the truth on his parents. Meanwhile, downstairs, Tigers and the team light powder kegs on fire uh, while Poe and Shen uh, fight for the truth above them on the conveyor belts. Shen finally tells Poe his parents didn't love him, but it's just a ruse to fire a big old cannon at him, which he, which he does. Uh, and Poe thankfully parries it with a steel pop. It gets blasted down into the lake below. Shifu, of course, way back in the, in the, uh, the village of peace. And that Yoda uh, moment. Feels it. He has that moment where he feels it like Obi-Wan did with Alderaan. And he's like, ooh, shudders. Uh, Poe floats down to the river. Question. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you ever think about how Shifu looks like Toretto? No, you just have it with like the random ass hairs and it's shit. It's the ears yeah. and the eye, like the eyes. I know Toretto only has one of the little eye patches. It, the shape of him is more moose-like. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but I, I'll... It's something about Panda the three. ear hairs. I'll have to check it out, yeah. What is, what is Shifu? What kind of animal is he? A mouse? Is he a mouse? Is it like a feel like a oh, Slater mouse? A field mouse? Mink? A big a old field mouse. I mean, he's really big. Yeah. I don't... Raccoon? Or... He is definitely Yoda, right? Like, he's a Yoda-like yeah. character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got the little cane and everything for him. What do you got, Joe? Red it's panda? Supposedly a red panda. Yeah, I was oh, going to say red panda. Then man, he but... doesn't look like a red panda. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I mean, how many red pandas do you know? Well, red, red panda's panda? more like a raccoon, right? Like a yeah, red they're panda. like yeah. a raccoon. Um, tanuki? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So no, tanuki's looks like a different thing. They're in yeah, the similar, similar small bear Yeah, but it's similar to tanuki than to a panda. Here's a panda, a panda, a panda. Here's a panda fact. Here's a panda, panda, a panda. Here's a panda fact. They're Pandas bears. have six. They're bears. They're bears. They are. And he's gonna read you a fact. The fact is gonna be about a bear that's white and black. Here's a panda, a panda, 
A panda is a panda fact. It's a little bit easier to play it that way than it's the two hand thing is kind of confusing. Let, Let me get, get my panda fact real Please quick. Please get some panda facts out. We'll wait. Well, Andy's getting his. A panda. raccoon is not a panda. It's not a bear. It's not a panda or a bear? <laughs> <laughs> it's from last week where he said he'd mentioned that. Remember when Joey was like, yeah, well, raccoons are weird bears. And then Nick was like, a raccoon's a bear? And Joey was like, wait, no. <laughs> One of the best moments. <laughs> it has to get confused. My memory is also Holy not that hell. great. Um, Kevin, can you pull up the thing that I just put in assets? Yep. I, I was just looking. <laughs> I was trying to figure out yeah, what uh, kind ooh. of animal Shifu is. This came up and I... <laughs> Don't really like it. Bro, this just makes a good point. It does look like ch a chinchilla. Also, we're only mm. seeing one chat. Are we supposed to be seeing two chats? Mm. Oh, are they not both up there? Bear I mean, it, like that just, I don't like this. <laughs> it looks sad and Well, this does right. look like Toretto. One of his eyes looks <laughs> like it's melting to the left. It's pretty sad. Us, his face looks like it's melting. Uh, Poe floats down the river and is picked up by the soothsayer. She saves him to fulfill his destiny. She helps him remember that he grew up in a thriving village of pandas. Soothsayer tells, uh, told Shen, uh, unfortunately foretold uh, that he would be destroyed by a black and white warrior, probably a panda, which uh, sort of said about him on a murderous rampage to kill every panda in the land. And yet, Soothsayer takes zero responsibility for this poor bet. You know, this, this poor uh, uh, sooth, says she has said, yeah, yeah, it's a bad call, right? Yeah. Totally. <laughs> it's genocide. I would have been like, so yeah. let me get this Extinction, straight. You're complicit. <laughs> You're complicit in killing an entire like species of animals because you had to open your mouth. Maybe we just don't tell any more sooths. Maybe we call you the maybe we call you the shut mouth sayer. I also love the overkillness of it all, where it's like, all right, cool, the peacocks, like peacocks versus like all these. I don't know about that. We got wolves. We got a fucking army of wolves. And it's cool as hell and very scary. I thought they were hyenas at first. That's what I thought too. And I'm glad Tim started talking there because I wanted Nick to just kind of sit with that for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I stepped on the chip again. <laughs> <laughs> it's still down there. I told you I, there was an energy today. <laughs> when when Nick went to get the chips out of the highest cupboard, he looked like a little hobbit. <laughs> and I looked at him and I'm like, what are you doing? Because we were about to go in. And he's like, just eating a snack. I was like, on content? And then he went, hmm, <laughs> I don't doubt any of it. No, I was hungry. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Don't take a picture of my feet without me knowing. No, it was the foot in proximity to the chip. <laughs> don't you take it on. <laughs> you don't have my consent. No, I to take took it purposely while you weren't paying attention so you couldn't like pose your foot so I could get like, <laughs> the least amount of offensive foot in the picture. And it was the proximity. You were going to get a picture full of foot on that one. You were smart. <laughs> ah, of course, we got the whole flashback here of Poe. And his parents and his mom and his, his dad kind of sacrificing his life so that his mom could get away with him. She puts him in the vegetable crate that is supposed to be picked up on the dock. And if, as she does so, the scene turns from 2D to 3D as he, as Joey rightfully said, uh, it turns from a, uh, a a dream to a memory. Is that what you said? Or a sort of yeah. a flashback to memory? Which is really, really cool. Uh, really, really sad as she says uh, goodbye to him and then runs up the hill to, uh, to distract the wolves and, and Shen as they hunt her down. Then we get the one hype moment in this movie. Well, one of them. There's two coming up. Your story may not have had such a happy beginning, but that doesn't make you who you are. It is the rest of your story who you choose to be. Poe remembers all the good things in his life. The dragon ceremony, training with the Furious Five, defeating Tai Lung, uh, and being uh, with his adopted father, Mr. Ping. So who are you, Panda? I am Poe, and I'm going to need a hat. Fuck yeah. So a couple things here. Fucking love it. This is, we're in full Karate Kid Cobra Kai territory of like, did this franchise earn no. a montage of the, uh, the previous movies this early on? No, 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 it did not. Did it still get me hyped? Absolutely. Absolutely. It paid off so well, but I don't love the line of, I need a hat. It's bad. It, like, it's, it, I'm, with Poe, I'm like, that's awesome. I need a hat. It's like, th this is not a Halo 2, I need a weapon type situation. Yeah, and he, like, it, the, what? It's not like they ever really made the hat a thing throughout any of these movies anyway. I got to assume a lot of that stuff was cut from prior shit and they probably just, it's yeah. so unfortunate because everything leading up to it's perfect. Just that one line sucks. And then the reveal of him in the hat is fucking awesome. How about this? My name is Poe and it's time to cook. The noodles. I like it. 
And uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm with you guys. When he said it, I was like, I did, did I miss something? Yeah. And I remember all the moments of him envisioning himself as the dragon warrior in the hat, and yeah. then the hat coming back to like have a, as a joke when he's walking out of the steam or, or the the mist of the first after, yeah. after beating Tylion. Oh, when he has his, the pot, on his a pot not yeah. a hat, right? Which is so it was a classic great moment of like, oh, it's another misdirect, right? But in this one, it was kind of weird. And then I was like, oh, he's gonna throw it as the disc of destruction. And then it just falls all limp, and you're like, well, that was just a poorly set up joke that didn't pay off, unfortunately. Yeah, but the shot of him standing on the, the roof, when you just see the silhouette of him in the hat, and the music hitting, I yeah. was like, there Hans Zimmer is. I've been missing mm -hmm. him all movie, but here he is. That's very true. Uh, of course, this is where uh, Shen's big plan now is starting to come to fruition. He's going to take all these boats into the harbor, and once they're into the harbor, they'll be in the open sea, and they can just they can basically take over all of China. So... The Furious Five uh, tied up, uh, all, all is lost, Tigress is beaten, and then they see Poe standing high atop of the building. We also get my favorite, like, funny line in the entire movie when they're all tied up, which is, I always thought I'd meet a nice girl and settle down, and then she'd eat my head. Yep. <laughs> that was so great. good. Great. That was great. Uh, we get another joke here that unfortunately didn't land for me, where he, we see the hero moment, and then he starts shouting. And then it cuts all the way over to Shannon. They can't hear him. I'm like, oh, this, it's just this joke's a, been done before. Yeah, we've and seen I, it so many times before and after. Like and like when it hits, it can be funny, but yeah. like, it's just, it didn't, it didn't work for me. Uh, yeah, I think the moment was too hype. Yeah. To to sort of resort to a, a comedic beat right there. Yeah, it was, just continue with the hype. Don't throw the, don't have the hat do anything stupid. Like we're riding a, a super hype high. Let's keep that shit going. I think the combination of the hat not going anywhere, uh, the shouting back and forth and they can't hear and the like bumbling and falling i think they needed to like pick one yeah i think all three was not great agreed uh of course poe tries to use the hat it's called the disc of distraction it goes nowhere so he jumps onto the boats and uh inadvertently neutralizes the cannons because they can't fire because they're too close it'd be too much crossfire would destroy all the boats so he frees the furious five and they fight on the boat to boat to stop shen before he gets to the harbor and then storming ox and croc joined in and this is the second hype. I mean, it. it's a this hype is... moment that I just did not at all see coming. And when it happens, I was I had to pause for a second, and be like, <laughs> "It's pretty goddamn cool." And he says, "Why did you guys? Why did you guys come?" And Storming Ox says, "Your friend there is very persuasive." And it just cuts over, and it's like, "Look, I'm going to tell you guys a little story." Okay, okay. let's let's we got to walk this back to 19 like or 1999, I think okay. it was right. I'm waiting outside a big Newport Ed Edward Cinema right for Phantom Menace. And I'm thinking to myself, this is going to be great. Of course, it was not great. And then we get Clone Wars a couple years later, and that wasn't great either. But there was a moment in that where a little Yoda takes out his dumb little stupid little lightsaber, and he pops it. And it makes absolutely no sense in the Star Wars lore, because Yoda would not need that. It's a dumb the Jedi's weapon. He's like a master at this point. But then he starts hopping around all flippity-floppity, and it's so fucking hype that I watched it like five times once this thing called YouTube was invented. That is this moment from yeah. Shifu wrecking shop. Just you don't yeah. even see him. He's just like down there, and the camera like zooms in. And he's just fucking people up. I'm right. like, first off, awesome. Second off, hey, maybe we could have gotten into the fight a little earlier, Shifu. What were you doing? You already you already perfected the final technique. What are you doing watching TV like my mom does? Watching every episode of NCSI. <laughs> She's seen them all. NCIS. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> They're great though. Great show. You know, Law and Order. Whatever. NCSI Miami. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this part's really cool. Uh, Crane uses his wigs of justice to smash the boats against the gate as Poe sort of closing the gate, thus barricading them all in. And then Shun Chen orders them firing. He's like, I fire the big cannon, even though Wolf Foss is like, wait, you're going to fire on ourselves. And then Wolf Foss gets his throat cut for it. He's like, fire, I said fire. fire at them. He's like, no, love this shit. Uh, Shen fires, of course. And then Tigress pushes uh, Poe out of the way. But how does Shen fire? By using his sick ass metal talons, just scratching that shit. And it lights, cool. man. It's so cool. Bad guy shit. Yeah. Uh, they, of course, this blast blasts everything to pieces. Uh, Poe is blasted into the uh, the lake. He finds Tigress floating uh, floating on a plank, like Kate Winslet from Titanic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He looks over, sees the boats, pushes her out of the way into safety, and then uh, boards a capsized vessel and stands off him versus this entire fleet of cannons in Shen's Wolf army. And then we get the and then then very we get a moment of the Last Jedi. Uh, it's very true. And again, going back to it, it's 1999. I'm waiting outside Big Newport. We right, we said that whole time. 
Phantom Menace. You see every right? movie in Big New. No, no, it's just Phantom Menace. We have to go back to the beginning yeah. to understand where okay. we went, right? Okay. So then Clone Wars comes out, not great. The next one comes out, which I don't remember, terrible, right? I got the high ground, all that stuff, burning a lot. No, and it's just dumb. Is it worth going down right? this path? I'm and not then so sure. 10, 15 <laughs> years later, right? <laughs> you get the trailer, right? <laughs> Chewie, we're home. I'm crying. I go see the movie. It's pretty okay. I'm like, oh, we're treading on some more territory. And then The Last Jedi happened, and it was the biggest rift that I've ever had with all my friends. so disappointing. I hated it, Nick. Cut five, seven years later, I my shoes get wet. <laughs> <laughs> Our problem now. <laughs> God, God. But yeah, this this moment, man. I Why mean, is the bottom of your foot so gross? <laughs> well, I've been walking around. <laughs> get those calluses. I don't need. I don't that need was a chip, pie? Kevin. <laughs> oh, is that what that was? I, I didn't. I didn't stay long enough. It's a callus, buddy. It's a, cut it off. You want me to give you a knife? No. Right. Mind your own business. <laughs> <laughs> You're showing me your phone. You know I mean? in our faces Mind your own for business. the entire show. <laughs> I got callous. Mind your own business. You fucking monster. <laughs> um, this shit's so damn cool, it's man. It's so cool, right? Him, him standing there, the, everything being shot at him, dodging, fucking like pulling it all in. Like the, the shot of him with the fire. You know, he gets it. He like does all of the the freaking like, water bending shit, whatever. When the, like he's controlling the tsunami and the waves around him, I'm like, that's where we see the yin and yang. Yeah, yeah. Like, they were just pop up. popping so off awesome. here, man. Like this shit was so damn cool. I uh, love it. Of course, uh, Shen's like, yeah, I, I had goosebumps there. Like this moment was very, very awesome. Uh, he throws one final cannon back at Shen. Uh, exploding the flagship and the biggest cannon there, as he says, a little skadoosh. Good douche. Goes over there, Shen says, how did you do it? How did you find inner peace? I took away everything from you. I scarred you for life. And he goes, scars heal. And he goes, wait, what? And he goes, oh, actually, wounds heal. Scars fade, I guess. It doesn't matter. You got to let go of all that stuff in the past. The only thing that matters is who you choose to be. Shen, of course, chooses violence and seals his own fate when the remnants of the cannon come crashing down on him, killing him forever. There's the moment of him kind of accepting death, like accepting who he is. Like you see a little bit of animation change on his face as before the thing hits him. I'm like, well, yeah, done, very good, very job. well done. Uh, Shifu, of course, then says what I think is the best line, and one of the reasons why I love the first one so much because I think their dynamic is sorely missing in this movie. He says, "It seems you have found inner peace," and at such a young age, <laughs> it's kind of pissed off that he did it well before Shifu. Did. Uh, well, I had a good teacher, is what he said. So mm. back at the restaurant. Mr. Ping has a breakdown in front of some of his customers who are hoping that uh, to see Poe. And he's like, I don't know when Poe's going to come back. I don't know if he'll ever return from saving China. Of course, right on right on time, Poe does. He comes back and his dad says, how did you go? He brings just, turnips or radishes he does bring or whatever. Radishes for his dad. He says, how did, how did it go? Did you save China? And he says, I did. And he says, I knew you would. That's why I had these signs made saying my son saved China. <laughs> so Poe tells him he knows who he is now. He says, I'm your son. I love you, dad. Hell uh, yes. And then they agree to cook together. Great end. And then Mr. Pink says, I'm going to cook. And then we yeah. get a little, not post credit, but we get a little uh, like stinger thing at the end. Oh, of, did we? I missed it. Uh, well, right before the credits even, right? Like it wasn't even, it wasn't post credits. It was just like pre-credits. Um, oh. Where what was we it? see uh, a, a panda in like the woods or the forest or whatever you want to call it. And he's like, oh, my son is alive. Oh, shit. Yeah. I missed that. I didn't get that. I didn't I see that. that. Yeah. Either. Hmm. Mine if went. Mine cut straight to credits. Just making shit up. Didn't make it up. Did not make it up. <laughs> no, it, stroke. <laughs> yeah, no, it was that happened. That happened. I'm I sure watched, it did, but I don't. But yeah. maybe the credits are laid out differently or some I, shit. I don't know. I watched it on Apple TV. Oh, I, watched I watched it, it on Amazon. I'll pull it up right now. Also, something that I thought was interesting at the beginning, the first thing before Poe's about to leave, um, Mr. Goose. I forget. <laughs> Mr. Ping. Mr. Ping. Mr. Goose. Um. Uh. Calls him by his full name, which is, I'm probably not going to say this right, Xiao Po Pong, which is his full name. Oh, that's cool. And I Googled it. It means little precious piece. And I thought that that was really cool. I love that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're right. Yeah, look. Holy shit. How did I miss this? It's just straight up the end of the movie. (laughs) Like right after he, him and his dad have the moment. We're going to cook together. I love you, son. The camera like zooms out to a different place. (laughs) How did everyone miss that? And I thought it was James Earl Jones, but it is not. Oh, there's a bunch of pandas everywhere. There's There's so many pandas. I must have just stopped watching it and thought that this was the credit. They're all just a bunch of inbred pandas. (laughs) It's all banging each other. So wild. (laughs) Good job, Tim. God. Oh, it's uh, Fred 
Had has to score. Yeah, score. that guy. He's in. That he's guy, everybody. He's, he's done a bunch of. It's a panda. A actor. A panda. Wow. It's a panda village. Poor Poe will never find out. They're never going to make another one of these. <laughs> now it's time for a thing I like to call Ragu Bagu. Ragu. New key Bagu. New keys because a C key doesn't work. Hold on. Let me press it. Uh, audio list is. I'm going to press it until it stops working. Jesus. Oh, right. that was, <laughs> wow. Right on cue. <laughs> I will say this in the in the kind of funny lore. This is going to be great. This is like one of those big moments where it's like they finally changed the key of Ragu Bagu. Yeah, huge. <laughs> remember this day. Yeah, remember yeah. where you were when this happened on February first. Uh, Rag guys talk bad guys. Where do we want to rank Shin? I'm you going number, number one, one, man. Really? Yeah. I'm going number, dude. The last one, uh, Tai Lung, fucking awesome. And I think his fight scenes were were better. And I like the 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 bridge fight and all that stuff. Like so good. Everything was good. Like, I really, really enjoyed him as a bad guy. I think the villains are probably, like, my favorite thing about these movies so far. I just really loved this guy. Like, yeah. He, this, to me, was, like, perfect sequel bad guy. I, I'm I'm right there with Tim, where I think Tai Lung had better fight scenes, and but I think, like, in terms of motivations, super similar. Like, I've, I've enjoyed both of their motivations and kind of both of their backstories. They're giving a lot of love to the villains in terms of, like, giving them something to actually be pissed off about, which I think is pretty damn cool. But yeah, uh, fucking Shen, Shen, what's his name? Shen? Yeah. Just Shen? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm really sure there's more of a name to it, but I just called Why it Why am Shen. I thinking Shen Long? Who's that? Oh, Tai Dragon Long. from, from uh, Dragon Ball Z, huh? I think. Maybe. Either way, awesome. Just uh, Gary Oldman was incredible. Um, the performance was great. The Just this like evil asshole and you're right the the sort of character that he created being like this like i'm gonna get what i want you know and uh just i loved every second of it i loved all of the cool little fight moves the peacock feathers kind of you know always being used as cool imagery awesome as hell yeah i agree i think mm. the fact that he like tried to take out entire species <laughs> in attempt to to not get in his way more menacing than just like a little see, I, I I would disagree with you guys. I see your point. I would just say like Tai Leung was actually scary. Like there's something and there's also something that I'm just a sucker for where it's like the old student comes back to like exact revenge. It's like it's a tried and true kung fu story. Like We've seen I? it in la I'm classic. Right? Again, Andy, 1999. <laughs> <laughs> um I just like I just I just <laughs> think I vibe with listen. that a little bit more because I found Tai Leung to be a little more imposing. I, I never at no point that I think Shen's I, he just kind of was a little too generic. And and then the backstory of him with the parents, I was like, I think we're trying a bit too hard. And I like the simplicity of, of Tai Lung just being like the scorned student who no one could beat except for the new student. Again, tried and true storyline, but I, I vibe with that a little bit more. Yeah. Again, I loved them both and I can't wait for three. I hope they keep it up because this is actually good, surprisingly three. No bad guy. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, the, the pandas are all happy. It's just crazy. a slice of life. <laughs> it's one moment. <laughs> it's about the house. Yeah, have you guys seen The Bear? Remember that episode where he goes to learn how to cook in Denmark? Yeah. That's this. That's, that's it. That's yeah. everyone. <laughs> um, so uh, no, number one is uh, Lord Shed. Number two is Tai Long. Uh, now it's time to rank the Kung Fu Panda movies. Currently, number one, it's Kung Fu Panda 1. Who would have thought? Crazy. What do we want to put Kung Fu Panda 2? This is way closer than I could have ever imagined. I'll start. I still think Kung Fu Panda One as a whole is just a better movie. I think it's, I think it's got way more charm. I think the character interactions, Poe, all the humor hits so much more. Um, and I really, really like the relationship between him and Shifu that starts contentious and then turns into sort of a father son mentor mentee relationship. I think you have a lot of great elements there that come together for a very, very uh, not surprising but fulfilling sort of climax in that movie. And in this one, I think we're just getting kind of more of the same, but to a lesser degree. So I would say Kung Fu Panda One is my number one. On the opposite side, I'm going to say that I liked Kung Fu Panda 2 better. Um, I think that I, it, it's definitely more heartfelt, maybe, or at least it worked better for me um, in terms of the relationship with his dad. I think the Tigress relationship, and I think that they balance the other members of the team a little bit better, where they were like more fun, quippy add ins versus trying to like establish each of them individually in the first one. Um, and then I just really liked Shen and Gary Oldman. <laughs> This is tough because right, I'm just doing like the math thing right now, Tim. Where it's like, ah, uh, you know, character in interactions I may have liked in this one more, but I think I like the arc there more. I think just overall the family stuff with Poe in Part Two uh, was stronger for me and made me feel more. Um, even though 
part one just sort of like hey you don't need anything to become the dragon warrior just it's it's within you like i love the message of that but damn part two's just the whole story of like you know finding where you came from and then realizing that everything you had is here back at home and you can just always make noodles with with papa damn i think i think i like part two a bit more part two got me more emotional and i got yeah. more teary-eyed because it just it was it like you mentioned with like this could be the end of kung fu i'm a simple man i'm two yeah. gettys i love that shit anything having to do with like family stuff like that really gets me yeah it's just so tough for me. I hate even doing this because of how we are <laughs> raised here. Uh, I will say I think Kung Fu Panda 1 is a better movie. I think I like Kung Fu Panda 2 more. I think that the way that that balances out with the, I'm with you, the quips versus action versus this versus that, I think I would have to vote Kung Fu Panda 1 over 2, which puts us in a complicated situation. <laughs> Dead Dead it, it is It is time. It is it's time. time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know I what? Won. I'm okay with that because I think that, you know, something has to be sacred. There has to be sanctity to, to this ranking. And mm -hmm. in my heart of hearts, I feel like I got to put one over two, even though I love two. I think putting them equal is good because I think when, when we look back at this in years and we see Kung Fu Panda equals Kung Fu Panda 2, we're going to be like, huh, huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> It'll be a cool thing to read back, like, facts sort of cataloging all of the in review history yeah mm -hmm. and go there's only ever been one, one tie, tie. <laughs> and it was in kung fu panda in review yeah. history's been made every and it was on the day we changed the the key for ragu bagu wow, wow. what a wow. Nice and the no shoe party really huge day for kind of funny <laughs> and for humanity yeah. where were you on february 1st for years we're going to talk about how this date relates to where nick was in 1999 yeah how Man, let here. me tell you dude uh let us know in the comments below what you thought of kung fu panda 2 how excited you are for kung fu panda 3 and 4 because we have two more of these babies coming out oh yeah uh and yeah next week's three till then let's go think